so hungry right now. Waited so long for this. As I'm getting deeper into the burger, I think uh, this is not called heart attack. In a sandwich, it's called uh, E. coli, on the verge of E. coli. So, yeah, that clip was from last week's vlog. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll leave a card in the top right corner. If you haven't seen it, go check it out because it'll help you appreciate what I'm about to be eating in this video. Oh my, what, why is this soundtrack be- oh, oh, okay, oh I see why now. Look at this amazing bowl of hot pho, guys. No wonder this soundtrack is being played right now. I'm just reminiscing about the times that these flavors burned away the soul of that disastrous, poor excuse of a burger. It, it, oh wow, l l just, let's just take a moment and enjoy what this soup is giving what the burger didn't. Look at that, can you tell how happy I am? And even a thumbs up, wow. You see that last clip just now? You might be wondering, hey Brandon, how does you eating pho incorporate into the title of this video? Well, I wanted to talk to you guys about something and it's specifically about dieting. So, just to catch you guys up to speed, I told myself starting today I would get back on my diet, but you know what happened? I had a ball fly to nowhere and you know, some friends were like, yo, let's go get some pho. And then next thing you know, I picked up this as well. If you guys don't know what this is, uh, you guys can't even see it because it's in a bag. A bun mi, which is a Vietnamese sandwich. We'll get more into that later. Anyway. Why I wanted to talk about this was because you see me eating some pho right there and pho is something specific that you really can't track and if you guys didn't know that one of the best ways when you are dieting is to track your macros or to track your calories so you know how much you're exactly eating so you could lose that weight or that fat, whatever you're looking to do, right? Because one of the best ways to lose weight it's just to keep track of what you're eating, calories in, calories out, whether it's macros or just straight up the amount of calories you're consuming in a day. So to my fellow trackers out there, you guys know that pho, a bowl of pho is not measurable. You can't measure that because you have to take into consideration that not each serving will be the same. The chef isn't going to grab the same amount of noodles for each bowl. Yeah, sure, it's going to be around the same, but it's not the perfect amount every single time. Same goes for the beef, um, tripe, shrimp, whatever you're throwing in there. It's not going to be the same amount each time. So why I wanted to talk about this is because you're going to be going into situations just like me where you want to enjoy yourself and eat with friends and there's food that's untrackable, especially something like this. Most of the time when you're dining in places like this, it's a mom and pop shop. You're not going to be able to measure it. Places don't have nutritional guides for you to follow, so you kind of have to base it off your eye. And even when you go on my fitness pal, for example, if I look up Bun Mi, there's going to be multiple Bun Mi um, listings on here. But the problem is with that, right? Is that, once again, all the bread is not the same. It's not the same size, not the same amount of spread they use, meat. So that's where you're going to have to kind of eyeball it. But my rule of thumb on how to help you guys out on this is. So, for example, I've measured my own bowl of pho before uh, since I cooked it on my own noodles um, and I could just kind of guess the amount of meat. I've had that much experience. Um, so you can't really do this without really, really um, going into macro tracking on your own and measuring your food. Once you start measuring a lot, you'll start to get a grasp of how much uh, ounces or grams something is. Of course, it's not perfect and it's always better to measure, but in cases like this, you want to learn and uh, start start you know getting your eyes used to seeing the amount. Um, anyway, so if I look up bun me on my fitness pal, let me show you guys here. There's a whole bunch of just listings you guys can see there, right? 
they have um, based on grams, just a sandwich, one serving, you see. So there's not really grams and you can't really measure it. Now, let's open this up together and let's see if I could guess this. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but uh, usually when you eat stuff like this, you want to eat stuff like this, especially when you're on a diet. I'm not going to eat the full sandwich right now. Um, I'll most likely just eat a half or one-fourths, and of course, there's uh, it's not cut in half. Okay, so let's, let's do this together, YouTube. Okay, this is something really important to me. Um, so with my pho, I'm pretty sure I had a little more noodles than usual, so um, I tracked rice noodles, and I've done 100 grams before with the noodle, and I remember that does not look like about 100 grams in the bowl I just ate. Let's give it one and a half. Okay, so I probably ate, so that's about 51 carb. Um, not bad, but I know that that was probably around it. But always when you're tracking like this, right, I'd add at least maybe 50 to 100 calories just in case. It's better to overshoot than to undershoot because you don't want to overeat, especially when you're dieting. So just take that into account when you're finishing your macros. So I have 150 grams of pho right there. Now this sandwich, let's open it up together. Um, so I found a recent listing on the bun mies. Um, it looks pretty accurate, um, just through what I'm seeing here, but I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. So this is a French baguette, and uh, I just wanna be careful when I'm opening this. So you see how, if you look inside there, I'm trying to get closer to the camera, sorry guys, so you can see more detail. There's not much meat, there's just one layer of, you know, your pork loaves and the um, Vietnamese style, like salami. Um, so I can understand why this person would put, um, so the protein, so I'd say the protein um, with meats like that, it's higher in fats for sure. Um, so maybe protein altogether in there, including the bread, because of course there's protein when they bake this stuff. Um, I'd say maybe 12, 12 grams of protein. There's not too much. Um, there's going to be more carb in here since you got vegetables, the bread itself, um, and yeah. So this is probably around um, here. Let me see. It just if we just base it off of bread, like I said, not gonna be perfect, but we can take guesses and try to you know tweak tweak a bit. Uh, this so okay so hmm two slices of uh, white bread is twenty eight carb. This is definitely more than that. So I'm gonna give it let's say sixty carb. 60 carb all together with the bread and the vegetables together. So yeah, I'd give it that. And for the fats, um, knowing that they probably put mayo in here. Yeah, they did. Mayo and, you know, the pork loaf and the Vietnamese salami. I don't know if it's actually called Vietnamese salami. I'm sorry, my Vietnamese viewers, if I um, got that wrong. But... Uh, if we take that into account, uh, the fats would probably be, I'd say 10 to 15 grams, but let's say 15 just to be safe because, you know, um, sauces like mayo usually have high amounts of fat. So, yeah, that's how you kind of um, bat, uh, kind of bat an eye. But like I said before, usually as well, this is another thing to keep in mind to those of you who are dieting and you kind of want to eat out. Um, as you slowly uh, move on to your diet, you don't want to do this obviously uh, when you're deeper into your diet, but being me right now, since I barely just started today, I can get away with this. Um, just the guessing. Um, sorry, I was thirsty. But with the guessing, uh, you can do this early on. Don't do it late. Whenever you are eating out, just keep in mind uh, if you are guesstimating, always account for uh, 50 to 100 more calories of the meal you're guessing. Maybe even safe to say 150 to 200 if it's a greasy meal. Anyway, what I usually do is I always order the smallest size. So for example, the pho I ate uh, just now, 
I ordered a small and then for the sandwich I usually eat the whole thing and I usually get a large bowl of pho but in this case right now I'm not gonna eat the whole thing and perhaps save a little more for maybe tomorrow or just chow down on the other piece that I cut out but of course we have to take that into account now another thing is too is knowing that I've eaten these things I can't really track um, I'm gonna be avoiding carbs and fats for the rest of the day which meaning meaning which I will just be likely be eating just pure protein and some vegetables and honestly I'm just gonna hit my protein mark I know that I'm not gonna be hitting those just with these two meals I just ate just now and as I said before uh, you can avoid the carbs just go high on your proteins on the days that you eat something like this and you can't track it because I'd rather have any of my clients or me myself hit that protein goal instead of you know meeting the calories for the day just so you, know, you get your protein in because you know you're exercising you need to rebuild your muscle but yeah that is what I wanted to teach you guys today anyway let's enjoy this meal I'm gonna cut this for you guys and show you guys a bite it's pretty good for those of you who never had bun me, it is super bomb. Uh, let's see if I could use this plate. Okay, cool. I think I can use this plate. So to those of you who have never had bun me before, it's a Vietnamese sandwich. I'm gonna eat some for you guys on here, on camera. But yeah, I hope you guys learned a thing or two uh, on this video. But like I said, this is only recommended or you only do this as at the beginning of your diet you don't do this on the daily but you, sometimes you know you have to sneak it in or um, if you don't want to be a party pooper of the group uh, you you know you can uh, just do the guesstimate but I don't recommend doing this too often I only get a, get to get away with it because it's literally first day of the diet but yeah so I'll show you guys inside there don't focus on there we go see so yeah this this whole sandwich itself I'm guessing um, from the numbers I did if I'm just doing quick math in my head I'd say about 600 calories altogether um, and then my pho you guys saw the bowl there wasn't much meat in it it was more so fatty meat um, so that bowl maybe is around 400 as my guess so that's already a thousand calories and if I finish this whole sandwich but as I said before I'm just gonna be eating I said one fourth but you know I might sneak away with half um, but I'm just gonna be eating chicken and veg for the rest of the day uh, so that's the kind of punishment you take if you do this by not accurately tracking um, you don't get enjoy as much carb or fats as uh, you would on your normal days but that's okay because sometimes you know life just hits you and you Gotta enjoy the food. Let's take that first bite. Here we go. Go give guys side view. Side view. Side view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Um. Guys. I don't know if that was a good idea because. I, uh. Might or might not eat the whole thing in one sitting. No, no, Brandon, don't do that. You are going to discipline yourself. Because if you don't, how are you ever going to get rid of that fluff? How? So another thing is I'm going to show you guys my leg routine. And I'm also going to be hanging out with another Jomalian, JK fan tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure what we're doing. But, you know, I'm going to vlog everything, make sure it's sick. So please stay tuned. Don't leave me yet. I just wanted to teach you guys how to get started in your diet. Why am I crying? Oh, yeah. That's because I thought you were going to leave. Don't leave yet. I promise. This vlog is going to be super cool. Wait, no, that's a bad transition. My food's right there. Don't do that, Brandon. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next clip. Hope you guys enjoyed that last segment and learned a thing or two. Anyway, welcome to the leg day commentary. I believe I haven't done one yet and walked you guys through it. I've only done a back day or upper body day. Anyway, 
this is my brother just starting out with the bar I recommend doing dynamic stretches before you do this of course and now seeing I didn't record these sets previous to this but you're obviously supposed to build up to your working set so you don't screw up your legs and here I'm starting my diet around this time so I'm trying my best to keep up with the numbers I currently have now in this next clip you're going to be seeing my brother using a belt I usually use a belt on the second or third set um, when I start to feel more fatigued the belt will help you keep on going it helps you lift heavier and keeps your core feeling strong and intact now after you finish this we're gonna be moving on to accessory work I usually like working my hamstrings and my quads on these types of machines now when you do this I usually go for a higher rep count I like to train accessory work hypertrophic style now I don't recommend high reps when you're cutting so as this cut continues I'm gonna have to lower the reps and up the weight to keep my strength and muscle so we're gonna be doing the same thing for the quads now when you do the quads try to point your toes in different directions and see what feels best in my case if I point it inwards I feel like I get the most out of this each muscle group in the quads feel like they're being used properly I hate these so much but you know they need to be done now you guys aren't gonna see it in the clip but I usually do calf raises as well you see me here doing weighted lunges another thing too is you're not going to see is after I do weighted lunges I also do ab routine where I do hanging leg raises they're in my previous video <laughs> you see me being dead there but I recommend doing stretches as well right after you're done finished with leg day because if you do not do that trust me if it's your first time working out legs and you don't stretch out your legs and roll it out it is going to be absolute hell so really stretch these guys out these are my favorite stretches to do I do these every single time after leg day and after I stretch that then I move on to the foam roller this was just a quick little commentary I wanted to do just for those of you wanting to know my leg routine as of right now since I'm cutting but yeah it was a short and sweet commentary anyway hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video hey YouTube we are out here right now in Colville Nature Park I'm standing on these branches I don't even know how I'm on here and it haven't breaking down, but I'm here with Venice. What up? We're uh, taking photos. It's more so uh, practice for me, and I kind of just needed to uh, get out and just see some nature, because uh, I've just been seeing buildings these this past few days. I kind of needed to have green and leaves around me. He's just helping me out. But yeah, we're gonna take some more photos. Um, hopefully, I can improve my skills. But we never know. Uh, I'm going to put the photos on here for you guys to see. And to those of you who do take photos, you can give me some tips or some advice as well. Let me know what you guys think. Time to take more photos. Okay. I did not see that there, you guys. Uh, I was really close. Is this wet, dude? Huh? Yep. Okay. This is gonna have to be a, uh... all right, pro gamer moment. It's wet, wet, wet patch of dirt. Ugh! I don't got skills like you, man. Dude, I'm uncoordinated. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when I find a spot. Like... Oh. And that's why I'm never the guy with directions. <laughs> 